Good afternoon, Grade 11s. Today I'm going to introduce you to an IB practical. This is your paper three in your final matric exams. It's an externally marked exam. So what we do during the course of grades 10 and 11, we teach you the basic skills that you need to know on how to do a practical. Practicals will always differ, but the basic skills generally stay the same. Right, how do you prepare for this paper? A couple of things you have to remember. Your independent variable. Tato, what is an independent variable? An independent variable is what um, you as an investigator manipulate or change in order to see what happens. Yes, so you, you are in control. I am doing it, I for independent. Dependent is what actually happens. Those are your results and what you actually record from doing the investigation. See where, what is your controlled variable? Controlled variable is a variable that is kept constant. That's right, yes, you can keep it constant because you want to have a fair test. You want to ensure that your results are accurate at the end of the day. And remember when you explain your controlled variables, when you write up your practical, you've got to also state how you kept them constant. Okay, we talk about a control. Okay, control is used to compare your results to something. Okay, so you always set up, in this experiment, you're going to set up a control test tube and you're going to set up two test test tubes. Your control, there will be no change, but you'll get a result in each of your other test tubes. And this also helps you to draw a conclusion to your experiment that you are busy doing. Okay, a couple of rules to remember. When you do a graph, remember, Graph always has a heading. You're going to label both axes on your graph. Add units where applicable, and if you're doing a line graph, you will join the lines together using your pencil. When you create a table, same thing. You must have a heading for your table. Remember in your table, the units are always at the, the heading on the table, not in the body of the table. Okay? Table must have a border, otherwise it's not a table. Drawing skills. Once again, your diagram must have a heading. You need to use a sharp pencil. Remember parallel label lines and you do not sketch. You draw continuous lines when you do your biological diagrams. And also very importantly, you do not shade in. Okay, a couple of things to remember. Using laboratory equipment. Remember the last prac you did, you learned how to draw up fluid from the syringe. Draw it up slowly. All right. Hold the syringe up, tap it, get rid of the air bubble. The measuring spoon. Remember you fill the spoon in this pack with the gelatine. You're going to take your spatula, your wooden spatula that you've got over there, the ice cream stick and you're going to level your gelatine out. That gives you the 5 ml that you required for your prac. Okay, this prac you're using two different types of pineapple. Canned pineapple and fresh pineapple. So when you start chopping up your pineapple, okay, if you use the fresh pineapple first, after you've chopped up the pineapple, you have two small beakers, pop the fresh pineapple into one of the beakers then rinse your tile and your equipment. You don't want cross-contamination because there is a difference between the fresh and the okay. tinned, canned pineapple, yes. Okay, right, when you do your prac, no sharing of equipment. Okay, you've got to bring all your own pens, pencils, sharpeners, erasers, calculators, etc. All right. Your prac consists of three sections. Okay, first of all, you have an information sheet. This information sheet gives you the story behind the prac. It tells you everything that you need to know, and it's going to guide you with some of the answers that you're going to have to supply me with at the end of the day. So it's very important that you read and understand your information sheet. Okay, part one, you carry out the investigation as laid down in the in the paper. All right, you read instructions carefully and follow them. You'll be asked to call me at a certain stage during your investigation. Please put your hand up and I will come and 
mark you. All right, part two, here you have to design your own experiment. All right, and I'm going to go through the stage on how to design this, an experiment with you. It's similar to what you have done, but you've got to change it. There's always a twist to it, so it's not the identical experiment that you are doing. All right, what you're going to do is check your workstation that you've got a tile, you've got a test tube and a test tube rack, you've got two large beakers, a medium size, two small beakers, you have a knife, You've got a spoon, you've got a spatula and a syringe. And a wooden stick as a stirrer. All right, now you can start conducting your experiment. Read what you have to do. And remember, after step five, put your hand up so I can mark you on your skills. Now you're going to design your own experiment. So I'm going to go through the steps with you. How you're going to design your own experiment. I'll go through the method as well. And then you will write it up in your own words. Right, first of all, you have to state a hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? Um, what do you expect your end result to be? Yes. If I do this, then this will happen. So your hypothesis is a statement. So what you're going to say in this particular experiment, bromelain enzyme is destroyed after you decide how many minutes of being exposed to heat or hot water. So decide if you're going to, your, next, your experiment you're designing, if you're just going to heat the pineapple or you're going to put it into boiling water. So write down your hypothesis. Okay, next you're going to state your aim. All right, your aim is to determine the time taken for the bromelain enzyme to be destroyed by. Now, what did you say in your hypothesis? Did you say heat or by hot water? So you'll put whatever you said in your hypothesis. Okay, we are at your aim now. Right. Your different variables, your dependent variable is, okay. First of all, your independent variable. This is what you're manipulating, aren't you? So what are you manipulating in this experiment? The activity of the enzyme, aren't you? And how are you doing it? You're either you're going to try and destroy it or denature it over a period of time. Okay, your dependent variable is obviously your time that you're going to take to do this. Right. Your controlled variables, how did you control these? Please don't forget the how. The two marks allocated per point. So first of all, you've got, you're going to talk about your size of your pineapple chunks and how you're going to control this. You can cut them to a specific size or you can weigh them. Okay, the measuring of the gelatin in the test tube, you can use a measuring cylinder or measure accurately using a syringe. Your temperature or heat source, okay? What you can do is place chunks of pineapple into the same beaker of boiling water, which is kept at a constant boil. And then obviously the concentration of your gelatin. Make up a standard gelatin solution, so, all the gel so you're using the same concentration of gelatin. As you're going to add to your test tubes. Okay.
Now you're going to write up your own experiment. Now remember when you write up your own experiment, it has to be different to what you have just done. Your method has to be written in bullet points. Okay, so something that you can do, you can take your slices of fresh pineapple that cut identical size or they've been weighed. Okay, you can prepare up a 500 ml solution of gelatine. So you've got your standard stock gelatine. Okay, then you're going to dispense equal volumes of gelatine into your test tube. From there, you're going to boil a beaker of water on a Bunsen burner. You're going to take a piece of your cut or some of your mashed pineapple, depending on what you've decided to do, place that into your test tube A. Then you're going to take the remaining pieces of pineapple and put them into the boiling water. Every minute, you're going to take out a piece of pineapple and put it into your various test tubes. All right, and you decide how many pieces of pineapple you're going to use. So what is happening here, you are timing how long it takes for the enzyme to denature. You don't know. So this is why you're taking your pineapple pieces out every minute. Okay, and you do, once you've done this, you put your test tubes into the fridge for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you examine the test tubes and see which, have, which gelatine has set and which hasn't. And where it's started to set, that is when the activity of the enzyme. Okay. okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to describe what you see in each test tube. You're going to... Okay. What does it look like? Okay, is there a colour change? Alright. And then here you're going to take your skewer and you're going to poke your gelatine because one will be firmer than the others. It'll be very similar to your control, the other won't be. Okay. <music>it says how can you improve on the investigation that you have done okay you can improve on the way you measured okay it can be a lot more accurate and how by using a mass meter all right you can repeat the experiment more than once to get an average okay and you can increase the number of test tubes instead of one test tube for your fresh or your canned pineapple you can have three test tubes of each which gives you an average which can get an average measurement okay okay the next point is when carrying out the investigation describe how you worked carefully with the spoon and the syringe to get accurate results all right here you cannot change the experiment so you've got to describe what you did in this experiment so gelatine powder you use with five ml spoon okay measured it out carefully and you use the spatula to level out the gelatine. All right, you use a 10 ml syringe to dispense the gelatine into the test tubes. You got rid of the bubble by tapping the syringe and you use the scale on the side of the syringe to enable you to measure accurately. All right, test tube C. That was your control, wasn't it? It was just the gelatine. Okay, so you could com use your control test tube to compare the degree of gelatinization with your two experimental test tubes.